everyone, Pastor John here. So good to see you. I hope you and your family are doing so well. And it's my joy and privilege to lead us in our time of worship today. And so let's begin as we always do by reciting the Lord's Prayer together. Please pray it with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, guys. Wonderful job of praying the Lord's Prayer with me. Well, today, we're going to finish the story of Joseph that we started two weeks ago with Sarah Samarin. And today, we're going to focus on the part of the story where Joseph gets reunited with his brothers. But before we do that, let's do a quick recap of what we've learned so far. If you remember last week, Chuddy teacher taught us about how Joseph was able to believe that God was so good to him even though so many things were going wrong. And how did Joseph believe that God was good to him? Because he had his faith glasses on. Do you remember those? It's when you look at your life through the belief that God is always good, even when things are so bad. Because we believe that God loves you so much that he can even make all the bad things that happen to you for your good where he will rescue you from all that is scary, and he will fix all the things that have been broken. And Jace, Joseph believed this truth even when his brother sold him into slavery, even when he was put into prison unjustly by the evil wife of Potiphar. You see, Joseph never stopped believing that God was always with him and that God would always bless him. And today, we're going to finish this story of Joseph so you too can know once and for all that God always loves you, he's always with you, and he will always protect and fix all that has been broken. Are you ready? Okay, let's get started. So if you remember from last week, we learned that after being in prison for a while, Joseph was set free because he was able to interpret two very weird and scary dreams that the king of Egypt, a man named Pharaoh, had. Do you remember? Pharaoh had two very weird dreams, where in one dream, seven skinny cows ate seven fat cows, and seven thin grains ate seven thick grains. And Joseph was able to interpret this dream of Pharaoh by saying, that this was God's warning to everybody, that one day God was going to bring seven years of famine, that is seven years of hardly any food growing. But before this seven years of famine would occur, there would first be seven years of abundant food growing everywhere. And so Pharaoh, after hearing Joseph tell this incredible interpretation, he was impressed with Joseph. And guess what? He made Joseph the second in command of all of Egypt. That's right. Joseph went from being a nobody in prison to being somebody, the second most powerful person in the most powerful nation during that time, the nation of Egypt. And so when Joseph became in charge, sure enough, for the first seven years, he collected as much food as he could to prepare for the coming famine that would happen in the seven years after that. And indeed, that is what happened. After seven years of abundant food being collected, there was a severe famine. Oh no, no more food? What are we going to do? Everybody was so scared. Everybody was so worried, including... Jacob. Do you remember Jacob? This is Joseph's father. And Jacob was scared for his family because his family ran out of Egypt as well. Excuse me. His family ran out of food as well in the land of Canaan. 
but he heard that there was extra food that was collected in Egypt, and so he told 10 of his sons to quickly go to Egypt and buy as much food as possible. But little did they know that the person that they would have to talk to and interact with in order to get that food would be none other than dun 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 Joseph. That's right. The person in their family who they thought was dead a long time ago. And so Joseph's brothers go to Egypt and they meet Joseph. But here's what's so amazing. So much time has passed. It's been so long since they saw their brother Joseph. They didn't recognize him at all. They saw Joseph as simply a mighty, powerful person in the land of Egypt. And so they were very intimidated, very scared of Joseph. And they revered him and they respected him. That's right. And now for the very first time ever, Joseph had power over his brothers. Now, let me ask you something. What would you do if you were Joseph? Remember, these brothers were the very mean people who almost tried to kill him and instead sold him as a slave into Egypt. If you were Joseph, would you be kind to your brothers? Would you be nice to them? You know, Pastor John has to be honest with you that if I was Joseph, I don't think I would be nice. I don't think I would be kind, especially when you remember that Joseph suffered so much because of his brothers, like being put into jail for a long, long time. But do you know what? Joseph decided not to be mean. He decided not to be cruel. Instead, he decided to forgive his brothers. But... Before he could have a chance to forgive them, he found out something amazing. Dun, dun, dun! Joseph found out that he had another brother, a brother he never met by the name of Benjamin. You see, Benjamin was born while Joseph was sold into slavery and lived all those years in Egypt. And so he never had a chance to get to know or to meet his brother, Benjamin. And he so wanted to meet his brother, his new brother, so badly. And so what did Joseph do? He ordered his brothers to go back to the land of Canaan to bring back this younger brother that he'd never met named Benjamin and to ensure that they would come back. He told his brother Simeon to stay behind. Okay, and so nine of the sons of Jacob went back and told their father everything and said, Father, your son Simeon is in Egypt, and the only way we can get him back is if you're willing to let us bring back Benjamin with us because the powerful man in Egypt, Joseph, he's demanding that they meet, he meets Benjamin. And Jacob was like, no, 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 not my son, Benjamin. You see, after Joseph died, Benjamin became Jacob's new favorite son. Do you remember who the other favorite son of Jacob was? That's right. It was Joseph. But now that Joseph was dead, or at least they thought he was dead, Jacob loved Benjamin so much. And he said, never. Never will you be able to go with my son, Benjamin. But what happened? All the food that Joseph first gave them in their first trip ran out. You see, before Joseph sent his nine brothers back to Canaan, he gave them a lot of food to eat. But eventually that food all ran out. And as a result, <clears throat> Jacob had no choice but to allow his sons to take their youngest brother, Benjamin, back to Egypt to get more food. Now, let me ask you, do you think Joseph's brothers were terrified, were scared? Oh, yes. They were so, so scared. They were terrified, right? Because now they were at the mercy of this powerful man who wanted some reason to meet their youngest brother, and they didn't know why. You see, 
Joseph's brothers did not have faith classes. They saw everything that was happening to them as God punishing them for what they did to Joseph all along without even realizing that the person that they had to interact with was none other than their brother, Joseph. And so they thought God hated them, God wanted to hurt them, and so they were so scared, so sad, and so sick with worry. But when they finally faced Joseph, do you know what happens? Instead of being scared or sad or sick with worry, they were surprised. Because the next time they met Joseph, Joseph could no longer control himself. He was moved with so much joy and compassion that he said, It's me! It's me, Joseph! It is me, your brother, who you put away all those years ago, who you sold into slavery, who you almost thought about killing. It is me. Come, hug me, kiss me. I've missed you, my brothers. And then when he met his younger brother, Benjamin, he gave him the biggest hug of all. And he asked all of them, tell me, how is our father? You see, when Joseph saw his brothers come back, he saw that as God's message to him, that he is now able to forgive his brothers. But let me ask you, how could Joseph forgive his brothers when they did something so terrible to him. Well, Joseph actually tells us in his own words, recorded for us in Genesis 50, verse 20. Follow along as I read it. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many. Wow, that is incredible. You see, Joseph could forgive his brothers because he always had his faith glasses on. He knew all the trials, all the troubles that he had to face were all opportunities to trust God. And by trusting God, even when things were so bad, even when things were so sad and scary for Joseph, he believed somehow, some way, God would make this all better for him and those he loved. And indeed, that is what happened. Joseph saw God's faithfulness in making sure that Joseph would not only be okay, but that he would have the power to save many people. And because he held on to that, he knew that he could forgive his brothers. That is how we forgive others as well. When we go through hard times and when people mistreat us and we choose to keep our faith glasses on saying somehow some way God is going to make all this better you will see that God will make it better and it will make you believe that not only does God love you that he will instead always be with you as well and when you remember that you will find within you the power and the desire to forgive isn't that something that is wonderful news? Yes, indeed. You know, when Pastor John looks at the world, you know what I see that is missing? I see what is missing is a willingness to forgive others. So many people are unwilling to forgive because they're so angry and upset. But you see, if only people would remember that God is always there and he will always be good to us and make things right, we would be able to have the strength and the desire to forgive and the world would become less and less bad, sad, and scary. And so my encouragement to all of you guys is to make sure you always keep your faith glasses on because when you do, you will see God will always come for you and he will always bless you, especially in moments when you feel sad and scared or when you're going through very bad times. Amen? Amen. Please pray with me. Dear God, we thank you so much for this wonderful story of Joseph and how he is a great example to us of always making sure we have our faith glasses on. Lord, help us to always remember that no matter how hard or how difficult or how hurt we get, we know you're going to use all of that for our good 
and so giving us the power to be good to other people, such as being able to help them or even to forgive them. God, help us to always remember this example of Joseph and let us always remember it is only because of your good kindness to us that we're able to believe in all of these truths. Help us to remember this every day, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, everybody. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.